Oh my, there are so many twists and turns to this story. Jamie Yukas again is in Las Vegas right now and joins me for the latest on this investigation. Jamie, Las Vegas police say it took 12 minutes from when the first shots were fired to when officers arrived at Stephen Paddock's room. Do police believe that was an appropriate response time? Well, we've been asking that question all week as this timeline continued to shift, and there was uh, obviously some questions about the amount of time it took to get police up there and staged uh, on the 32nd floor. What we do know from security experts is it sounds like there was initial confusion as to where the shooting had occurred. So you heard in my story there that uh, that the security guard had radioed down, and yesterday in that press conference, the sheriff said that he had attempted to radio down and then used his cell phone to call. There was no clarification on if that was to police or hotel security. So what we know is that that came in around 10.05, and then the police had to stage. There are also armed security guards within Mandalay Bay who staged. They were in two teams, and it sounds like within 12 minutes, both teams were then on the 32nd floor. We were told by security experts that if they didn't initially know where they were going, it certainly could take 12 minutes. Now, why was there the confusion if that radio call had made it down? Uh, we don't know that right now, and that's what we're trying to get clarification on. The second point of this is that the teams, when they went to stage, they staged on the 31st floor when they finally had a handle on where the shooting was occurring. But as you remember, earlier in the week, we learned in a press conference that when they got up the stairs to the 32nd floor, that door was bolted shut. Mm. So there was an issue. They then had to turn around, get back and figure out how they were going to get to the 32nd floor. So that's likely why it took that 12 minutes. Jamie, the uh, biggest question that still remains unanswered at this hour is why? Is there any other new information about what may have motivated the gunmen or are police still at a standstill? I think that's where so many people are frustrated, including Sheriff Lombardo, you saw in that press conference on Friday. They don't have a motive at this point in time. The FBI, who is also working hand in hand with the police department here, also said they don't have a motive and clarified yesterday saying they still have not found that he was a part of any type of ideology. It doesn't sound like he was participating in any type of group, uh, that he didn't have an accomplice in this, but that they hope that somebody heard something or heard him planning so that they can start going back and piecing this together. The other piece we learned this week is that the shooter's girlfriend, Mary Lou Danley, uh, has been interviewed by investigators time and time again, and she keeps reiterating that she really did not think that there was anything wrong with Stephen Paddock's mental health. So that's a piece, too, that investigators are looking at and, and still asking themselves why this happened. I've got a couple more questions for you before we let you go. We understand an autopsy was performed on the gunman. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, that was interesting. Uh, we did learn that, that there was a visual scan done of the shooter's brain. And what was found is that there were no visual abnormalities. But his brain has now been sent to a lab where they will look at it microscopically and see if there was any type of abnormality. Uh, the sheriff revealed that for the first time uh, in that press conference on Friday as well. The medical examiner also reinforcing that, letting the press know uh, that they are looking at any potential abnormalities on Stephen Paddock's brain. All right, and a final question for you. Just a clear up some confusion. Early reports suggested the gunman was targeting nearby fuel tanks. Have law enforcement confirmed that was indeed the case? Yeah, so that's, you remember there were two windows that Stephen Paddock was shooting out of, and it turns out that he not only was firing at the crowd, but then would go to the second window and was firing at the fuel tanks, which are really just right over here. So you see where Mandalay Bay is. Uh, if, just behind me right now is where those fuel tanks are located at McCarran Airport. Uh, what the sheriff revealed yesterday is that he, that he was firing at them, but that they don't think that they've gone and investigated at the airport, that even if Stephen Paddock had hit them, that it was very unlikely that it would have caused an explosion or any type of fire, that the airport is investigating that to make sure uh, in the future that we don't have anything like that happen. Uh, we don't know exactly why Stephen Paddock was firing at those fuel tanks, but the sheriff revealed earlier in the week that he believed that it was a part of Paddock's escape plan. When they went back and looked, he had plenty of body armor. He also um, had explosives in his car and he was shooting at those fuel tanks. So the idea is that he had this, this whole escape plan so that when the shooting was completed, he would be able 
able to get out alive. As we know, that did not happen. Uh, it's been reported that there was a su single gunshot wound that killed Stephen Paddock. We don't know why he stopped shooting and then killed himself uh, when he did, because he did have still plenty of guns and ammunition in the room. So that's a question that's still left unanswered. One thing I want to tell you, DeMarco, that was revealed yesterday that was of interest and seemed to make the sheriff quite emotional is that, and plays into that whole escape plan idea, is that when the police officers arrived here on scene initially, when they drove up to Mandalay Bay after getting reports that shots had been fired on that country concert across the street, is that Stephen Paddock apparently turned his attention and started shooting at the officers responding. That's the first time we had heard that. Now, the sheriff said they're trying to figure out as well if he wanted to target law enforcement just for the simple idea of targeting law enforcement or if it does go into that whole escape plan idea that it would keep officers from getting to him uh, if he was able to shoot and kill a number of officers as they were coming into Mandalay Bay. It appears he was just after whoever was in his way. All right, Jamie Eucas again in Las Vegas. Jamie, thank you.